NASCAR officials have finally given in and given up on the 550 horsepower package with the high downforce. It took them long enough. They kept on saying how much they liked it, but they finally gave up. They finally threw it into the trash can, and I am happy. Good decision for once, NASCAR. Good decision. I'm proud of you. But of course, the controversy, we're going to talk about it, of course, but the controversy over the past couple of years has been the racing package. What is under the hood? What is the aerodynamics of the car? How is the racing going to go? And that has been the talk over the last couple of years with this low horsepower with five, 550 horsepower, but also high downforce, meaning that there wouldn't be as much power in the car. You wouldn't be able to, you know, have as much power. I don't know how else to say it. And then also the high downforce, you know, would, you know, so they were slower on the straightaways than normal, but they were higher speed through the corners, but it made it more difficult to pass, made it more difficult to, I mean, it just made it more difficult to pass. That was the biggest thing about it, but it also made the cars easier to drive for the drivers as well. You know, we see drivers on edge, you know, right up against the wall at Homestead or, you know, alternating lanes at Kansas, something like that. We see these drivers working really hard in their cars, trying to get the most out of it. But with the 550 package, the drivers, it's kind of easier to get as much out of the car because they were really holding the throttle wide open the whole time. It was just a matter of what line you get in and if you get dirty air in front of you. With the big spoiler and, you know, with the lack of power, it made it extremely difficult to pass. You know, you'd get the dirty air in between you and the driver in front. We saw the biggest example of this in 2020 at Kansas Kansas with Joey Logano holding off Kevin Harvick for the win for 30, 40 laps when Kevin Harvick clearly had the faster car. And uh, Logano was able to hold on because all he did was block lanes. He didn't have to be faster than Harvick. He didn't have to hold Harvick off in a side-by-side -side battle. All he had to do was pick a lane and hope Harvick didn't follow or, you know, if Harvick went into a lane, quickly get down to block him or go up to block him, you know, because the air would just get dirty. It would disturb the nose of the car behind you, all that stuff. So, yes, they have finally given up on it. The next-gen car, which is debuting on February 6th at the LA Coliseum, that is still so weird to say. Um, yes, it will be debuting there, and... They have done multiple tests over the last couple of years, I want to say. They've tested, you know, different things with the cars, different ducts, different, um, you know, everything. Different types of horsepowers. They've run 550, 670. I think they did a 752. Um, not 752, but they also did a 750 test. Uh, they've done different size spoilers. They've done some things with the um, windshields. I mean, they've done a lot of tests with this car to try to make it the best possible race car to appeal as many people as possible. Look, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter if you do the 550 package, if you do a 750 package, if you do a thousand horsepower and you know, like a four inch spoiler, two inch spoiler, whatever it may be, not every fan is gonna be satisfied. When you have millions of fans, not every single fan is gonna be satisfied. So you can't try to please every single fan. Every single race is not gonna be a good race. Also, I mean, everyone needs to be aware of this. Just because we're getting more horsepower back does not mean that every single race now is going to be a great race. There's still going to be bad races. There's still going to be races where someone leads 300 out of 400 laps and dominates, whoops the field. You know, it's going to happen. There's going to be boring races. So, you know, this doesn't solve every single problem. It doesn't mean that every race is going to be an absolute thriller next year, but it will mean that there will be less frustration in terms of the, you know, the aerodynamic situation, the getting in the dirty air in terms of, you know, getting more power. And as Steve O'Donnell says in his statement, it puts the cars back into, or the race back into the hands of the drivers or something, you know, because this package really did make it more, I hate using the word easier because, you know, it's still very difficult to drive these cars as a race car driver, I'm sure. But compared to the older cars or the older engines and you know stuff it made it easier to drive and so far the response from the drivers to this change to the 650 four inch spoiler or 670 four inch spoiler has been positive alex bowman william byron brad keselowski uh ricky stenhouse jr and a few others have made comments on social media saying how excited they are with these changes saying that you know woohoo we get the cars back uh, we get to drive the cars, we get to showcase our skill, that kind of thing. And that was what was frustrating to me, honestly, 
Look, the restarts with the 550 package, I won't deny it. They were thrilling. They were fun. But it is kind of frustrating knowing that these guys are just flooring it and, you know, just having to pick lanes and, you know, it doesn't seem as difficult to as if, you know, they have to control how much they use the throttle. They have to use the brakes, you know, they... If they send it too deep, they might hit the wall, something like that, like what we see at Darlington, what we saw with Larson at Darlington on that last lap. That's the kind of stuff I like to see. I like to see drivers absolutely sending it, putting it on edge, the thinnest edge possible, trying to get every single inch out of that car into the corner. And with the 550, I never felt that. I'm sure some of you enjoyed the 550, which good for you. I'm glad you enjoyed it, but I just didn't feel that edge, you know, where the drivers were putting themselves at, at risk in terms of the car being at risk, not in terms of, I mean, obviously in a race car, you're always at risk of, you know, injury, all that stuff, but putting the car at risk because if you push it too hard, you make a mistake, you're in the wall. You make a mistake, you wipe someone out. Whereas the 550 package, sure, that was still a possibility, but, you know, you send it into turns three and four and you make, you know, you go to the inside, floor it, lift for half a second. Okay. Whereas... You know, a couple of years ago in 2018, you know, you put the 750 in the small spoiler, you had to hit the brakes, you had to let off the gas, you had to kind of, I don't know how the, but you had to on off, on off, on off the gas sometimes if your car was getting loose. So, uh, yeah, it's really cool to see that this uh, is coming back in terms of the more horsepower. You know, if it was up to me, I'd go back to whatever they had in 2014. I know this car is going to be different. There's going to be different things about it, but. 2014 was such a good year for racing, in my opinion. Man, that was a great year. Anyways, um, now to some official stuff, I guess. But competition officials worked with teams to f to try four engine aerodynamic configurations last week on Charlotte's mile and a half oval layout. Officials said the fourth and final package, a higher 670 horsepower figure and a centered four inch rear spoiler for reduced rear downforce received majority support from those attending Friday's post-test meeting. So, you know, as I said, the majority of the teams, I'm sure the drivers, crew chiefs, car chiefs, mechanics, all that, they said this is the best option, which I'm glad that was the best option. Um, you know, and it's going to be used at every track except for Daytona and Talladega and potentially Atlanta. They're like, they're still trying to make Atlanta into like a mini super speedway. So they still haven't determined that yet. They're going to do some tire tests and some other tests at Atlanta in the upcoming weeks to see how that goes. But basically every track from Martinsville to Coda to Charlotte Motor Speedway's oval to Michigan is going to use the 670 horsepower package with a four inch rear spoiler. It doesn't matter where we go, except for Daytona Talladega. We are going to use this package, mile and a half, whatever it may be. So I'm really excited for that. As for, you know, how is it going to race? I mean, even if they did the 550 package with, you know, this car, I still think it wouldn't be as good as it could have been if they stuck with the 550, but it, we still are not 100% sure what this car is going to race like. They've done some mock tests, some mock races with the next-gen car in the testing, but um, the first real test, I think, will not be at the Clash. The Clash is going to be extremely unique. Daytona 500 will be different. I'm expecting them to use lower horsepower there tapered spacers restrictor plates whatever it may be because of the dangers of those tracks and how fast they are so you know that's expected though so i think the first real test of how this will race i'm gonna have to go to the the schedule here which is auto club actually i for some reason was thinking homestead that might have been last year's schedule but auto club will probably be the first real test to see how it does um, you know, I don't know what to expect. It's going to be the last race on the auto club two mile circuit. So I, I, I really don't know what to expect, to be honest with you. I don't know what the qualifying times are going to be like. I don't know what the cars are going to race like. I don't know how, you know, I, I really, I'm really not a hundred percent sure, but I do think unlike the last couple of years, the drivers are going to be more in control in terms of how much they get out of the car. The past couple of years, yes, sure, the driver was very important in terms of, you know, getting the most out of the car, but, you know, there was definitely more 
on the mechanical side in terms of the engineers, the mechanics, all those guys, they were a little bit more important in my opinion than what they, I mean, they're obviously important overall. You get my point, but, um, the car almost seemed like it was more important sometimes, but the driver was also important. I think you kind of get what I'm saying there, but this will be where, whereas the car is going to be important. The driver is going to make the biggest difference because of how far they can push that limit, how much they can get out of that car, how much, you know, um, from what I've been reading about the next gen car and the tires that they're possibly going to use is that there's going to be more tire wear than we've seen in the past so oh, few years because it just feels like in general, not just with the 550 package, but overall the last five years, like tire wear has just gone down for the most part. So, uh, tire wear coming back will be nice. Of course, they're using a new tire, new wheel, uh, one single lug nut. So, I mean, the single lug nut's not going to have a factor into the tire wear, but the different size tires are going to play a factor. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously all that's going to play a factor into how this races. I, I'm cautiously optimistic now. Uh, even with the 550, I would have still tried to remain cautiously optimistic, but hopefully this is a step in the right direction. Um, you know, I'm sure you all have your opinions about it, but I was one, I'm sure of many that were wanting more horsepower in the car to give it back to the drivers because, you know, the drivers are, they have so much talent. You know, you look at some of the top guys in the sport, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, defending champion Kyle Larson, all those guys have so much talent in driving these race cars. And it felt like, you know, you, you didn't let, you didn't let the dog out of the cage. You know, he was just kind of sitting there, just kind of chilling, you know, wanting to go out and play. Now they're getting their opportunity to go out and play, go out to showcase how good they are. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Obviously next year is going to be a little bit unpredictable, uh, with a brand new car, new regulations, all that stuff. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it though, but uh, that's all I had for today. I'm really excited about it. I'm really happy for NASCAR that they made this decision. I was beginning to doubt them. I thought they were going to stick with this 550. I mean, they have been constantly saying, we like what we're seeing. We like what we're seeing. We like what we're seeing. Well, they didn't like it enough to keep it. And you know, I didn't like it enough. So I'm glad they didn't keep it. But uh, yes, that is my opinion for the day on NASCAR. And I feel like I haven't done NASCAR video in forever. I feel like it's been all F1 the past like three weeks. But um, yeah, I'm glad I made a NASCAR video again finally. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. Um, have a great rest of your day and uh, woo NASCAR.